Greetings and welcome to Star Trek Discovery Pod, a sometimes funny and trying to be smart podcast covering all things new and classic Trek. I'm your current acting captain, Mariah Gossett. With me on the view screen, we have... I forgot a pun. Again, <laughs> I, forgot. I keep on doing this. I don't know why I keep on doing There's this. There's no episode to make a pun at. It's uh, okay, I, Paul. Uh, it's okay. It's okay. <laughs> uh, I'm Paul to touch it, everyone. <laughs> and we also have joining us tonight... Hi, I'm Tony Kim. Welcome, Tony. We are so glad you're here. And ba -ba -ba -da, Clyde, Clyde Hayes. Here. <laughs> Beaming in at the last second. Um, tonight, we are going to have a good old fashioned nerdy Trek chat hang out. We're going to be talking about some questions from the live stream. So if you have them, start thinking about that. Uh, we'll talk about some of our favorite Trek moments. Uh, we're going to obviously talk about Trek merchandising and all the things we love to purchase and put in our homes. Uh, and we're going to talk a little bit about some of the conventions and cons that are coming up. Um, but first, Paul, can you uh, remind people where they can find us on the internet? Yes. Uh, let's see. Hey, people. Uh, I am supposed to remind you where you can find us on the internet. So if you uh, like our stuff, like listen, rewind. Paul, remind the listeners to subscribe to podcasts. To, to the, oh my God, I'm falling apart. It's okay. You can find <laughs> us on goodness. Apple, Spotify, <laughs> YouTube. <laughs> you can find all our links at StarTrekPod.co. And maybe, Paul, you can talk about the Patreon. I believe in you. Yes, we have a Patreon. If you like our episodes, uh, and, and if you don't like me, still subscribe. <laughs> uh, just for $2 per episode at Patreon.com slash StarTrekPod. In Indeed. And uh, Clyde, would you like to tell folks how they can participate in the chat this evening if they're tuning in live? Yes. Smoke signals tonight. That's how you can get us. No. <laughs> Seriously, uh, if you are watching us live on your streaming platform, um, then we just ask that you type capital P, capital O, capital D, capital pod in the chat. And that will let us know about your thoughts, your comments, your questions. And we'd be happy to peruse them and just maybe talk about them live on air indeed it's thank like you all i have that bajoran like uh design disease on deep space nine where it made people like like not be able to talk <laughs> do, do you remember that episode like season one anyone anyone oh, well, that, that's what deep cut deep that cut deep... that's right it, you know season one is definitely deep cut but like uh but yeah that's how it feels like right now um I believe in you, Paul. You can come back from this. <laughs> uh, we're we're going to find out. We're gonna, I'm, I'm in penalty um, box. Yes. Um, but obviously tonight we are joined um, by our very special guest, Tony B. Kim. Um, Tony, I would love for you to introduce yourself to the audience. Um, and my first question I always love asking people is, what was your gateway into Star Trek? Yeah. So um, uh, my company is called Hero Within. Uh, we do kind of sophisticated geek fashion apparel for fans and we've been we've worked with uh, great brands like uh marvel and dc and um godzilla doctor who and we uh proudly uh represent star trek as well so um uh we've been in business for geez how long has it been now this is like our sixth year uh it feels like the 60th year <laughs> after the pandemic um but uh we've been um really b so excited to be able to create and design and produce star trek merch and it's really one of my first geek loves and you know to your question of how you know the, the gateway into star trek i remember being like um i mean i was teeny tiny um and i was i don't know maybe i don't know seven or eight years old or something like that and um, my older brother, who, you know, you always love whatever your older brother's into or older siblings into. And he told me that there is this movie coming out called Star Trek, the motion picture that is based on this old TV show. And my, I remember being so young and thinking to myself, wait a minute, they took like characters from a TV show and like, it's the same characters in the movie. And like, they're like, continuing their story like i remember just being so fascinated with that concept that like these characters lived outside of like the television world you know they could live in other mediums like comics and movies and other things like that 
So um, what a what a novel concept now. <laughs> then, yeah, 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 right. And of course, back then, all we had were like newspaper clippings and things like that. So there was nothing. You know, there was this you know big these big articles that have come out announcing the the motion picture, and it was like a year out from you know releasing it. So during that year waiting, and while all my friends were um, into Star Wars, and I love Star Wars too, but while they were all into other other properties, my brother and I were just counting down the days till Star Trek The Motion Picture came out. And we were, at, in preparation, we just like committed ourselves to watch and just be able to catch the um, the original series when it, when, it, when it was airing. Of course, there was no VHS or uh, no DVR or anything like that. So we were just kind of catching it, you know, whenever it was playing on TV. And... Um, I, you know, the movie, the movie came out and, you know, it, for a lot of, uh, it, it wasn't popular for a lot of uh, eight year olds out there, but <laughs> I fell in love. I, you know, it just was, I couldn't believe it. It was beautiful and it was so like magical and it really like transported me to this truly to the 23rd century. And, um, you know, ever since then, I never looked back and I was at every opening of every Star Wars ever, or Star Trek ever since. And, uh, yeah, so that's kind of how I got into my. Yeah, you know, I'm a, to thank my brother for it, but it, honestly, it was this. It was this uh, full page spread, or a uh, uh, full yeah, full page black and white newspaper spread of the of the Enterprise and the the cast were you know it was a it was a big um, mm-hmm. photo of the Enterprise with the cast standing in front, and that image just captured my imagination at a young age. I mean that uh, it it sounds really relatable. I I'm trying to think of what my first Star Trek movie experience was, and I think you know going to a theater for me it was Star Trek 2009 because there was such mm-hmm. a big gap because I grew up watching um, Voyager and and some of TNG, but um, but truly I didn't get to have that Trek movie in a theater on the big screen experience until t- 2009. Um, Clyde and Paul, what was your first? Um, Star Trek movie experience, like going to the theater and seeing it. Clyde, where'd you go? Uh, I think for me, it was, I want to say, Generations, maybe. Hmm. Really? That late? I don't know. I'm trying to think. The first, like, TNG, because that was really my thing. It's like, I think, I, I'm, I don't know that I saw any of the original series movies actually in the theater wow right but i think the minute that i was seeing this crossover Mm -hmm. that's not true i want to say was it like star trek five or six like is there like you know what does god need with a starship or (laughs) or was it like you know uh, shakespeare in klingon i'm I'm just i'm trying to think i i remember generations because i was like Mm-hmm. Now we're getting into my track, right? Because to me, TOS was always my mom's track for a while, right? Oh. Because I remember my mother was a big Trekkie. And so, you know, it'd be a Saturday afternoon. I'd pop out of my from my room and she was in the living room watching Trek. And I was like, what is this? And then I couldn't leave. I just want to like, okay, what, what's happening next? And I remember seeing it, but it wasn't really like, so I've probably seen a bunch of the original series, but it wasn't really mine. Gotcha, and so gotcha. I remember watching the movies, but usually on, you know, VHF or, you know, when they came on HBO or something like that. Mm-hmm. But, you know, I was all into TNG from day one. And so when Generations came out, I was like, count me in. Yeah. Like for me, like I remember wanting to see Raft of Khan because, mm-hmm. you know, I was a big Space Seed fan. Like, you know, like how can you not be in that episode, right? Uh, and I did, I couldn't get a ride to the theater. Like, like, you know, no one was, uh, no one was giving me a ride. Is this where this stems from, Paul? I was, I I don't know if people know, but Paul is like the, the, the friend you can count on who is always willing to give you a ride to the airport in Los Angeles, which is like (laughs) the rarest quality in a friend I have come to find out. Um, so is this like the deep seated trauma, Paul, that that has made you the reliable transport? I, I didn't drive till I was 21. (laughs) <laughs> uh and, and and so and when my parents or my people go like why don't you drive well i got people to drive me 
Yeah. But like you know, because I'm an asshole. But like you know, <laughs> but but at like you know, at, once I started driving, I go well. Now I got to pay it forward or, or pay back. You know, like. Mm. Mm. Uh, but yeah, so I remember watching Star Trek three in the theater. Mm. Uh, but it was just Star Trek three isn't one of my favorite ones. So, uh, but I remember being in San Francisco watching Star Trek four, like waiting in line. Oh, wow. Yeah. yeah wow. It, it, it was, it was a really big deal. Like, you know, it, it was a great theater and it was, it was just really, you know, like say what you will about four, like, you know, cause whales, but like, it was, it's it was my favorite one. It was really, <laughs> it was really fun. And I was, I was probably old enough to really appreciate it. Like, you know, like just enough to go like, oh, you know, this is all great. And like, you know, and I was living in San Francisco at the time. Like I was like maybe 13 or whatever. So mm-hmm. it all just meant something. And, and like, mm-hmm. as far as like, the, that, that, that's the, like, and ever since then, like, you know, I'm like day one or two of going to see Star Trek movies, like when they're out. But like, um, but definitely like, you know, that four is the one where I go like, that is, that's like a like peak season, you know, of uh, going out to see Star Trek movies. I like that. I like that a lot. Um, that leads me mm-hmm. to uh, another question I love asking folks um, is if you have a favorite Trek memory. So this isn't often like it doesn't have to be your first memory of Trek, but if you have one that you particularly enjoy, that's like fun um, that you've like, I don't know, interacted with other fans at cons or, or, um, you know, maybe it is like a, a time you got to share Star Trek with someone um, who has never uh, experienced it before. Um, what about you, Tony? Um, you know, I, yeah, I have, geez, so many memories to choose from so many uh, great memories. And, um, the, the one I'm about to share probably isn't so great, but it's also really awesome. Um, I, you know, I, uh, Paul already mentioned this, but I, I remember I Star Trek one experience, uh, could not wait to see Star Trek two, of course. Yeah. And, um, I was so devastated with the loss of Spock in that. Oh, movie. sure, like, yeah. I yeah. could, yeah. It was the first time I ever cried in a movie theater, uh-huh. yeah. and it it was the first time that I, as a young kid, I experienced loss. Like, it felt this genuine yeah. sense, like I lost someone real. You know, I yeah, no. I could yeah, not, yeah. I I couldn't believe it. And uh, you know, because even at that time, it was like, um, you know, when you think about all the there wasn't a ton of big franchises out there was sure. star Wars. Um, and just like how it was like, spoiler alert, like Darth Vader is Luke's father, you know, and he needs the hand. And, <laughs> what? You know, spoiler alert. Spoiler alert. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. <laughs> forever um, ruined. I'm forever I'm, ruined now. I don't... But you know, that same level of just like the shock and awe of that occurring, you know, was, was um, yeah, it was, it, 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 I couldn't believe it. So um yeah, for me, like it, it was the again, first time. Yeah, it was the first time that I go like, "Oh, a hero can die." Mm, in a right. Movie. Yeah. Yeah. I'm yeah. like, what? Well, what the what the, what just happened? And you know, Kirk going like, in all my travels, he's the most human. <laughs> <laughs> but besides okay, the fact that that's like my that, that is my you know favorite Star Trek movie, uh, it was you know so incredible. So the, besides the fact that the movie itself was so amazing that moment and walking out of that theater and just feeling like I, it felt to me that like I had lost someone that I actually knew, you know? And, mm-hmm. yeah. and uh, so that kind of, that kind of at a young age really informed me about the power of storytelling and that uh, even though these are imaginary characters, you know, they still impact us in very real ways. And so just kind of dealing with loss and grief and all that sort of stuff. Um, mm-hmm. uh, and then they announced, Star Trek: The Search for Spock, and I thought, hmm, maybe he's coming back. I had a, I had a, I had a suspicion he might be coming back, but yeah, that's probably my what's burned in my brain after all these years. Awesome, awesome. I like that, uh, Paul Clyde. Anything you want to share? You, you know, I talk about this often, and that is j- just for me, especially in the in the nineties, how important it was to to really see someone who looked like me on television and and even more so a nerd um so to see jordy and this is gonna sound kind of interesting but or weird but also to see his his love interest and failure and so spectacular failure of love interest (laughs) 
to uh, a <laughs> to, uh, um... you're like oh like to a hottie <laughs> it just it, it it was like oh he gets it like he yes like this is this is me and not only was it me but it was some friends of mine that we could like it was just like wow we felt seen and so to to be able to talk to other you know guys to about trek and to really nerd out about trek was like hmm like we can we can really get into this and have conversations um and i don't feel weird like i thought it was mm. like that was just something special to me like you know that water cooler conversation that you have this was this was different love it love it uh mm-hmm. for me I think it was a rerun episode of a Voyager, uh, a Voyager episode, Taylor, Tinker, Soldier, Doctor. Hmm. Uh, so like I had gone, uh-huh. yeah, I was, I was on a date and we, were, this is back when the swing dancing was a thing and I had dropped, uh, this, uh, I was dropping this girl off who, and, uh, she asked me like, you know, Hey, do you want to come upstairs and watch Voyager? Uh, because Voyager had come on, like, you know, was at, at that time in LA, it was on at like 11 or midnight, you know? And, and so like, I go, well, yes, I would. You know? <laughs> <laughs> and so, uh, so, uh, we're watching, watching the episode. And I didn't know, I, to say date was like maybe a little too presumptuous. I didn't know if she liked me. We, we went out swing dancing, but like, you can be platonic. And so throughout the, you know, throughout the episode, I didn't know if this was just friends who happened to be watching uh, Star Trek at midnight after swing dancing <laughs> or if it was anything that happened. So I, I kind of like was very good and stayed like on my corner of the couch. But apparently, you know, there was like a gravitational anomaly that kind of pulled her closer <laughs> and closer to me. Uh, and at the end of the episode, she was like, basically like on my lap and and, <laughs> and and so like we made out for a bit and like four months later i married her no wild and, and we're still yeah. married and we're still watching star trek together like, like, yesterday, uh, like yesterday i was uh i thought for some reason a strange new world was premiering and so we were at we're up at 11 30 go you know we're gonna watch oh, star we're trek. so excited and, 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 and then it's not and we're going like Oh man, <laughs> that just sucks, you know. So, uh, so like, yeah. So, so we we still like Star Trek nerd together, and so I guess I have to say that as as my like one of my favorite memories. You missed I it, Clyde. It was so good. Very every, sweet story. <laughs> I heard every word of you making out to Star Trek on your couch. That's right. That's right. <laughs> Um, I was going to plug one of my favorite Star Trek memories is actually watching the killing game from Voyager for the first time. Really? The Herogians. Uh Yeah, I think it was like, I love, I mean, I have a special place in my heart for holodeck episodes, but I think it was like... <laughs> Love it. Um, and Nazi holodeck episodes. Well, I, I think it was because it was at the time I was taking like world history uh-huh. and I was like, oh, this is like them talking about it was like all of the pieces came together in my young little like sure, sure, you know sure. like 10th grader mind where i was like oh like they can you can talk about history in these like fun fantastical ways and like it was like true magic of television you know i was sure, like sure. oh it. it's already magical that it's like in the future but then we're going to add this extra layer on yeah, top no, of it no, no. um mm-hmm. yeah I don't know. No, like it's a good episode. Yeah. It's a good episode. Like it, it's a Harry, good Harry two-parter, Kim, you know. Harry. Yeah, Harry Kim Ford <laughs> episode. He's a, he's the one holding it all together, right? <laughs> he's trying his hardest. <laughs> um, you know, if I could if, if I could uh, add just one more little memory yeah. um, that was important to me, you know, uh, piggybacking off what Clyde was saying, um, you know, back in the seventies and eighties, there for my brother and I, there wasn't. If you ever saw an Asian on TV, it was he was like karate experts or he was like the uber nerd kind of thing and so for us seeing sulu on screen was really like the first time that we saw somebody that was like he was cool i mean he was flying this enterprise you know and um i remember thinking to myself like and then of course the whole cast kind of being diverse and just thinking wow like and at that particular time i remember thinking you know I, yeah, my brother and i um 
feeling very sort of marginalized in our community and just not really felt understood. And then realizing that, Oh, there's like, there's like a, a vision and a version of the world where like uh, diversity is embraced, you know, and there's like representation. And, um, and, and I remember just being very inspired by that as a young kid. Yeah. I yeah, think that's I what agree more, Tony. Yeah. A hundred percent. I think it's like why we still love, at least to me, it's like part of the reason I still love that the franchise continues today and like continues to evolve and what it means to have infinite diversity and infinite mm. combinations. Right. It's mm. like, as the, our world has expanded, the Star Trek world has expanded and it's nice mm. to see that like, they're like, Oh, I can see where society is going and we can like match it and surpass it. Um, in that way, we've got it's a, a, um, it's a compass, right? You know, it's a good compass yeah. for where we sh- not where we are, but where we could be. A hundred percent. Um, we've got a couple of questions and some memories here in the chat. I thought I would share. So Kuhn says, um, pod Garrett Wang had dinner with members of my star Trek club. Oh. Um, this may be slightly mean, but I jokingly told him I outranked him now as a Lieutenant. <laughs> <laughs> like <laughs> it, it, it sucks. Cause like, you know, so you have like, you know, Harry as an ensign, and like you know, and you have like Tom Paris coming in from jail, <laughs> yeah, and he's really. still a lieutenant, <laughs> and, and, and he, you know, and, and throughout the whole series until the Water Planet episode, like it's not that Harry gets promoted; it's like Paris gets demoted. Mm. <laughs> I'm just saying. Yeah, I'm just saying. <laughs> Always keeping yeah. the Garrett Wang down. <laughs> so mean. <laughs> Um, let's see. Uh, Marge asks a uh, question for Tony. What makes us want to dress like our heroes? That's a fun question. What do you think? Oh gosh, that's a good question. You know, I, I think we want to, you know, it's funny because one of the, and this kind of ties into our, our, our backstory as a company is that, you know, as, as we were all, you know, nerds when we were younger, um, I think our instinct was, you know, in our teens or maybe as a young adult, whatever, to sort of hide that to suppress that to like kind of uh not uh not to be considered a nerd but then now things have so much has changed the Mm -hmm. the landscape of pop culture has changed to where it's cool to be weird and it's cool to be different and strange and you know uh normal and perfect is so so boring right so um one of the reasons why we started here within was this whole idea that we shouldn't feel like that there's a separate inside and then there's a separate outside that it should be the same. Like whatever is your passion about on the inside, you should be able to reflect that on the outside and, and be, be proud. Whether you're at in a social environment or at work or at play or wherever you're at, you should feel like that you can kind of represent what you love. So, um, and you know, I have in my closet, a stack up to my head of the black t-shirts and hoodies that, have the big graphic prints which are fine you know mm-hmm. nothing wrong with graphic prints but um there's a th- there are needs to be able to be fashion forward and to uh you know represent what your passions are um in all kinds of settings so that a whole idea of like you know why and how, why we should we should we dress like our heroes is is we should be able to represent what we love all the time whether where, wherever we're at you know and so that was kind of the part of the genesis of, of starting, um, you know, here within was this idea of, of dressing like your heroes in a way that's, you know, is flattering and is, um, uh, you know, it's, that makes you feel good about yourself. I, I love that. I was recently um, watching an episode of Jeopardy and like one of the contestants was wearing, um, she had this dress that had like the Star Wars rebel um, like mm. emblem on it, but it was so cool. subtle. It was just like right. a pattern on the sleeve. And I was like, oh, like I had to really look. It took me a few times but I was like, that's really cool that it's like it, it looked like something nice enough that you could wear as a contestant on Jeopardy. But then it had these like subtle things that gave us a glimmer into her personality and what she likes. Right. See, yeah, that's the yeah. stuff I love. I love the subtlety, but when you talk about like a glimmer, I'm always mm. thinking that we're we're people who are trying to find our tribe. Mm. And so I like those subtle things where people are like, oh, I get that. And, you know, someone in, you know, Chippy in the chat t- says you can wear s- sports stuff every day. Like if mm. you've got a, right. a favorite sports team, you know, and, you know, like I'm a, I'm a Bears fan, you know, or for a long time being a Cubs fan. Mm-hmm. And you see someone with a Cubs hat, you're like, ah, oh, like you, 
you get it right <laughs> so when i wear a star trek shirt like i have one that i i think is subtle it's got four mm. lights on it and it says <laughs> there are four lights and i'm going if you comment to me on this then i know you really understand what it is that you just saw right like mm -hmm. it's, it's 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 an inside joke and it's like oh you're probably one of my people mm -hmm. um and so i i that's why i love thinking like we're this community and yeah, yeah. it's well, always I, go ahead paul i was gonna say like my wife and i like recently as in like two days ago had this conversation about like how do we make capes come back into fashion <laughs> <laughs> like a business casual cape <laughs> <laughs> absolutely that would be fun i um <laughs> i always think that i have this uh i like when it is like those sort of inside jokes because although i'm like sometimes i wonder what people are thinking the shirt actually is if they have no idea what what it means at all like i have this print from um what we do in the shadows the original movie um mm -hmm. that came out and it's an image of a of a cat but with jermaine's face on it because the joke in the movie is that he can transform into other things but he can never get the face right and so it's just like <laughs> this very strange shirt though and i've had a lot of people being like oh that's a very interesting shirt and then you try to mm -hmm. explain it and then other people have come up and they're like oh my god i love your shirt like that <laughs> recognition um mm -hmm. is is super fun um I was going to, there was another good question. Oh, um, another one from Marge. Who is your hero? You had to pick one, Tony. Oh gosh. Uh, geez. That's, um, <laughs> yeah. I, you keep so, it in nerddom or we can go IRL. Like, <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you know, just to stay on, um, stay on, on topic. Um, yeah. I, I think data and Brent Spiner is probably, um, would be one of my heroes just because I don't, you know, so many fantastic characters in the, I mean, in the 50 plus years of Star Trek, but um, at the heart, at the core, what Star Trek is, is, is what does it mean to be human? You know, they're, they're mm -hmm. sort of wrestling with humanity. And I don't know if there's a better character, even more than Spock, I think. Like, I love Spock, I incredibly love Spock. But like Data and what he's been through, especially as we conclude his, uh, well, seemingly conclude that in Picard season three, mm -hmm. um, you know, how he has wrestled with his humanity over the, the span of several decades. Um, I, I think there's just something for everybody to relate to that, you know, and uh, I, I was so I was so touched with how they handled him in season three and the, and the fact that he finally arrived in this human body but it was far from everything that he's cracked up to be like it was mm -hmm. it presented a whole new set of challenges for him you know and um yeah so uh, I, I had tons of heroes for sure um but i just think that um that character and of course the brilliant performance of brent spiner you know just mm -hmm. um he's been um he is he's been such a gift to star trek and as i'm sure everyone would agree to uh, but yeah, I think his portrayal and that that character, um, yeah, I, I, uh, one of my favorites for sure. Absolutely, that's a good answer. I mean, not, not to go against it, but like mm. the actual correct answer is peanut <laughs> hamper. It's peanut hamper. Oh, <laughs> oh, wow! Right, but bam! Mama said, "Knock who, you out." Who knew? <laughs> Um, you, know, you know, I was sitting there thinking like we the were going to get through time. this really nice interview and not I have did. a peanut hamper moment. <laughs> so, well, I'm not going to say I thought that because I completely forgot about it. And here in my mind, I'm thinking if Mariah asked me, I should shock Paul and go Shaw. My hero yeah. is Shaw. Yeah, yeah. Right. It's not. It's not. But I thought you would get a kick out of that. I would, um, I would, I would. And so when you when you started saying, oh, you know, not to go against, I was like, oh, he's going to say Shaw. And then, boom, you hit me with the peanut hamper. You you got me again every week. The the, the, the way yes. to have done it better is for us to have set up with Tony earlier for him to go like <laughs> my favorite is Data, but until Peanut Hamper, that would have been the perfect setup. <laughs> if we had it, uh, but Tony, if you're unaware, we somehow managed to bring up Peanut Hamper at, okay. uh, in every every episode. Every episode. episode. Okay. Um, she is truly um, our mascot of this podcast. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> in some way, shape, or form. Um, I am trying to think. I, I mean, I think um, it's 
Ahura and specifically Nichelle Nichols would have to be, I think, my selection. Just because oh, I thought you were going to say Colt Mo- uh, Kate Mulgrew for for sure. I would have guessed that too. I would I would have guessed Janeway. I I love Kate Mulgrew and I love Janeway, but I think it's like both on and off screen. Like what she was able to do with the platform that she was given mm-hmm. is like just so incredible and just like I mean I love her in all of the movies like the animated series she gets some really great moments and some really fun um storylines like my favorite episode of the animated series is um when all of the guys go down to the planet and all the women are left to run the ship and then all the men get hypnotized and it's like they have like the women have to save the day and it's like um a, a, one of my favorites um but yeah, I mean, she just did, she did so much. Like the fact that there's a drunk history episode about Nichelle Nichols is like, <laughs> it cements her, I think. And like that, that hero canon for me. <laughs> yeah. No, I, I love that. Like my, my real choice is not Tina Hamper. But if I, if I had to choose, like, you know, it's a, it's an unlikely one, but like it's Nog from, uh, oh, uh, I love mm-hmm. it. because like for me, he's the person who kind of risks the most to to you know to be what he really is like you know mm-hmm. he's he's a Ferengi who wants to go eventually wants to go into Starfleet mm-hmm. he kind of turns his back on you know what his culture you know uh, advocates mm-hmm. for this vision of who he thinks that he can and should be for like the nobler purpose blah 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 mm-hmm. and you know and, and and there's such growth like you you can see him go from a kid to an adult mm-hmm. in a way that like it just resonates with me. So like, I, I go like in, in that kind of like, you know, if you're Picard or Kirk, you have like, you know, captain superpower, mm-hmm. but if you're just like, you know, some kid on like, you know, running around the, you mm-hmm. know, deep space nine and you, and you, you know, you become the first Ferengi captain. Like it's, it, it's, it's something. Mm-hmm. For, for me, you know, I say it all the time. Everyone in the chat's going to know that I have a, a certain affinity for LeVar Burton, but, I also think now that I'm going back and rewatching, um, and it's it's like it's it's I'm in a different stage of life. I'm a different mm-hmm. person now. There's a certain I'm drawn to Cisco, mm-hmm. um, and the reason why I'm drawn to Cisco is when he, he's so different, and but it's also this sense of 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 being a dad, right? Mm-hmm. And so as a dad. I'm seeing, you know, my favorite franchise through this different lens, right? How do you how do you balance the sense of leadership, work, and also being a father? And particularly being a father where you've you know, you've got a son who's not particularly happy that you he's there and you're trying to make a life for him and it's really really difficult, but there's just this that that work life balance kind of, you know, in a noble profession. Um, I'm seeing Cisco in a different light these days. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I think that's what's so lovely about there being so many different Trek series, right? And like why I get excited when we get things like uh, the announcement about the Academy series. You know, it's like all of these different avenues for people to find themselves in these shows and that it can grow and change over time because it's like, yeah, like definitely I think uh, I would have said Kate Mulgrew for such a long time, but I think at this point I'm like, a little burnt out on being like career leader, boss, boss living off of coffee. And it's like, Oh, but there's someone else I can kind of gravitate towards for a little (laughs) while and like appreciate that all of these different facets can like be a part of, of how you learn from these characters and like appreciate these characters. You you know, who's, who subtly is, I think what it's all said and done. Absolutely is uh, making a play to be on my Mount Rushmore of uh, Star Trek captains. Ooh, Mount Rushmore. Ca- mm-hmm. uh, I like that. I like that. Is um, Pike. Mm. Like, and that's so interesting because you're talking about we're, we're now in a, a renaissance of mm-hmm. like a, a new rebirth, if you will, of Star Trek. Mm-hmm. If you had asked me two years ago, Pike wouldn't have even been a thought. Mm-hmm. Right. And now mm-hmm. I'm like, he might be in the top two or three, definitely top four. Like mm-hmm. I'm, I'm, if if this trajectory continues, I can't wait for this next season. Mm-hmm. But I'm really feeling pipe. I just ordered my, I uh, got my 
Ooh. My str strange new worlds phaser. So nice. For cool? the audio only listeners, Tony is showing off a really cool strange new worlds phaser. Yeah. <laughs> All the bells and whistles. Yeah. I've been uh, I've been also trying to grow my pike's peak out as well. It's looking good, Tony. I, I've been trying to do it. It's a, it's a tough, it's a tough do. It is. It is. <laughs> It's very I'm impressive. Like when I'm watching the episode, trying. I just find myself just staring at his hair. I'm just like I'm mesmerized by it. <laughs> <laughs> I would, yeah. I wonder what it's like. It, I recently got to meet um, Tan France in person from the Queer Eye series, who also has pretty iconic gray hair with a big sure. swoop and like seriously not a hair out of place. And I was like, yeah. I wonder if he has like an insurance policy on his hair. <laughs> like, does <laughs> does Paramount have insurance on Anson's yeah. like hairline? Like. <laughs> I mean, I'm sure they also use a lot of wigs. Almost all television shows use wigs mm. for continuity purposes, but mm. um, they're doing a great job. <laughs> um, I wanted to ask, I, we've heard a little bit about, um, you know, your story of Hero Within, um, but I had a question about like what um, fandoms do y'all decide to create apparel with? I know there's also like all of the licensing that goes into mm -hmm. all of that, that I'm sure is a fun bout of paperwork that no one really wants oh, yeah. to hear about. Yeah. But um, but yeah, how do y'all decide what fandoms that you're kind of working with as a brand? Well, you know, for me, I, I have to. I, I'm really best motivated by creating merchandise around fandoms that I'm personally just passionate about. You know, mm -hmm. I, I just feel like that. Um, I have to. You know, we've all gone to cons. We've all um, shopped around, and we've all experienced when something doesn't doesn't come from an authentic place you know whether it's um interaction or it's a piece of merchandise or um whatever it is it, it things that feel like a cash grab or just feel like oh they're just kind of they're phoning this in you know and, and uh before i was doing here within you know i was uh blogging and creating and podcasting with my website uh crazy for comic con where i just travel different cons and you know, moderate panels and, and all that stuff. And, you know, I always told myself that if I ever was in a position to create merchandise for fans, that it would come from an authentic place. So, um, so when we started here within, you know, we had to, we've been fortunate to be able to work with some awesome brands like Marvel and DC and others. And um, for me, it's always just come from, I, I have to feel like that I am absolutely love with this, brand at this particular point and um i see look out in the market and just see fans that um you know kind of a, a void in the market and you know we can fill it with certain things and so when we, we 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 when we capes right <laughs> when, when i um I, I uh when we first picked up star trek it was back in um 2019 um we barely had anything for it it was like we just started with it and if you can kind of remember, go back with me to 2019, um, you know, there was very little new happening with Star Trek. You know, mm -hmm. I mean, there wasn't it, it wasn't all these shows that we we're experiencing now. No Lower mm -hmm. Decks, no Strange New Worlds. Um, I think it was all, just the maybe the beginning of the second yeah. season of Disco, right? Yeah, yeah. it was at still the very you know, beginning. But that was really that was kind of it, mm -hmm. you know. So um, so when it started out, there honestly was not that much demand for Star Trek. Like we were realizing seeing that, um, you know, all the more, more glitzier stuff like Marvel and stuff were, were on the rise, but the Star Trek demand was just kind of low. And so to kind of see over the course of the few years, of course we had the pandemic and we have Paramount plus launch and everything like that. Um, like this, just see it blow up and just mm. to see like, fans just reinvigorated and their love for you know star trek sort of renewed and um so you know it, so for me it's it has to come from a genuine place and to see kind of what has happened in the past few years with star trek the sort of renaissance of star trek ex ex experience right now could not bring me any greater joy and it's so fun to be able to create stuff that you know fans you know love and are excited about and get you know, I have all kinds of hot opinions about and, um, you know, we get all kinds of suggestions to do this or that and fix this and that and do this and that and whatever. And um, to, to be able to do that now during this particular season of era of Star Trek is a is a, is a huge privilege. So. So, yeah, that's, you know, that's kind of where um, I don't want to do things that I don't love. Like, I don't want to. Mm -hmm. There's a whole like, you know, 
My Little Ponies and Bronies and all that, awesome. But I don't know anything about that. So I just can't see myself. I'm sure I could find people that can do that. But I have to feel like if I'm going to be the spokesperson and really push things out, I have to personally love it. So, yeah. Yeah, that's interesting. I um, was thinking about what's like the strangest um, or strangest, maybe the most creative request you've ever gotten for a piece of merch. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I get, um, uh, I've gotten a lot of requests from the, from the medical community. So mm. people that want me to make pop culture branded, like, um, scrubs or oh. doctor, <laughs> doctor, uh, the, sure. uh, what's it called? The robes, the jackets, the long, what the mm -hmm. coats, whatever they're, they're, um, so I get a lot of that. Uh, I get a lot of aqua wear, like people want me to make, um, um what's it called wetsuits so oh. i get a lot of you know wetsuit sure, sure. branded yeah. stuff surfers um, want a rep <laughs> yeah right right um an aquaman wetsuit would be kind of <laughs> <laughs> um so get get a lot of that um of course pets we get a lot of pets mm -hmm. uh all kinds of can you can you outfit my iguana or chihuahua or whatever that is um, I mean, everything you can think of, you, you know, mm -hmm. it's, it's really kind of comical, like every corner, a lot of military mm -hmm. stuff, uh, a lot of firemen, police where, I mean, just literally every possible. Everyone's like, I want have. my niche and this yeah. niche to come yeah. together. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So definitely, definitely a lot of, that, a lot of that. So that's cool. I, um, this past weekend, I went to the Austin Television Festival, um, which I highly recommend if anyone's ever looking to attend. It's a great time. Um, and I went to this really interesting panel that was kind of on the importance of physical media and how it's been disappearing. And this was mm -hmm. th it was um, mostly from the point of view of like creators of television and how like um like i don't know if y'all know but like the simpsons don't create box sets of their show anymore mm -hmm. and i was like oh it's really interesting because i feel a bit spoiled in in the trek um sphere about like i can order blu-ray copies mm -hmm. of all of the trek shows right now mm -hmm. but it was interesting because on that panel they're like literally that could change tomorrow if the yeah. demand even dips just like a little bit sure, they could sure. just decide that it's not worth it mm -hmm. um and they had the um woman who wrote and created the show um dickinson um uh which was great on from apple tv highly recommend it if you're into emily dickinson poems um and uh she was like she had to like hound <laughs> apple to get she got four copies of her show on on blu-ray mm -hmm. um and so she has one and then she gave one to like the emily Dick dickinson museum in amherst one to like a television library at harvard and one to like the amherst library so that it was like this can exist somewhere but i thought that was just so wild so it's interesting mm -hmm. to hear like you know, as these fandoms continue to rise and it's like, I know within the fandom communities, we're all like pretty avid consumers and purchasers of these things, but it's like, they could be gone tomorrow if they decide mm -hmm. that they don't want to have it, you know? Mm -hmm. um, so I think that's interesting. Um, just putting that out there. That's really just my call to arms for everyone to say that you should be demanding DVD copies of your favorite TV shows. <laughs> and if you use our code. <laughs> and if you use our, right. <laughs> um I just think that's interesting. Um, you mentioned cons. So like purchasing a lot of the um, products or seeing products at cons that might not necessarily be like kind of up to par or you can tell it's people who are just like not actually a part of the fandom. So mm -hmm. spoiler alert, like I've been to South by Southwest, lots of big film festivals, but I've never been to a con and I am going to San Diego oh. Comic Con this year for the mm -hmm. first time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so what advice would you have for people starting to, to attend cons? What do you wish you knew your first con? <laughs> Well, um, you know, I've written extensively about about mm -hmm. the first time experience on my Crazy for Comic Con website, um, and uh, yeah, I mean, you know, the, what's so great about a con is that whether it's your first time or it's your millionth time, it's they're so fun, they're so awesome, and it truly is one of the only places that you can go to where you feel like, oh, like I really do belong to a, a sort of a larger majority of of weirdos, and it's awesome, you know, and and, um, you know, growing up, I, besides the fact of not having other Asians around, there were other geeks around. And so mm -hmm. I'd always longed to be in a space where people kind of understood me and related to me and all that. So, so I think that 
for re for it is sincerely the 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 most um uh positive thing that you can experience at a con is just that kind of sense that we're all together in this um but you know i think the other big part is that the um whole idea of uh infinite diversities and infinite combinations. The fact that when you go to a con, it is such a great experience to just experience so many different other fandoms. You know, there's mm -hmm. so many things out there that uh, it is truly remarkable. Like every time I go to a con, how much new stuff that I'm learning, you know, and, and I'm like, every time I don't recognize a cosplayer, I'm like, that's anime, right? That has to be anime right there. <laughs> and, uh, you know, and just to see in the past couple of years, especially since the post pandemic, anime has come on so mm -hmm. strong at cons mm -hmm. i mean it is just taken over even for those who are going to san diego this this year you'll see that there's like a significant growth in the you know the anime industry um especially in, when it comes to conventions and so um so just to like go with an open mind and to um to experience new cons if you go to san diego comic-con you have to do this whole rigmarole of getting it if you want to get into a panel that you want to see you have to get into the room like you know, hours and hours earlier just to make sure you're in that room. So when you're in that room, you end up watching all these panels that you would not have wanted yeah. to attend. And from it, you're, I mean, I, I've talked to, so, this happened to me. I talked to so many people that became huge fans of something new because they just sort of like sat through something and saw the actors and watched the, the reels and all that and became like huge fans. And so, so when you go to con, it's just a great opportunity. Don't just stick to your own thing, like branch yeah. out, ex explore, try some new things, hang with some new fans and you'll be surprised by the things that you fall in love with. Mm. That's great. Clyde or Paul, have either of you done a con before? Yeah, I've, I've, I've done a few. Uh, for Comic-Con, I would say bring good shoes. Mm. <laughs> that's, that, 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 that's, that's, that's the key thing. Bring good shoes because you're walking a lot. Yeah. Uh, like like Chupi just mentioned uh, Dragon Con. Dragon Con is like one of my favorite cons. It's like you just go for pe people watching. It's crazy. We'll be exhibiting for the first time this year at Dragon Con. Oh, awesome. So. Yeah. Dragon Con is great. Yeah, I, nice. I, I love Gra Dragon Con. Yeah. Uh, that one's in Atlanta, right? Yep. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, it's like in August, I think. No, August? it's no, it's uh, September. September. Okay. Yeah. So, so Beginning September. It, it, it's been a while. But yeah. It's like but, the world's biggest cosplay show. So yeah. Wow. Like those are, those are two that I go like are renowned you know mm. uh you know I, I think when i in my heyday when i went to uh comic-con uh, san diego comic-con like i think it had become really popular to for the industry to go down and like you know preview stuff like you know like i remember when star trek uh when they what you call it the uh the joss whedon jj abrams panel was out yep. there mm -hmm. uh but i feel like that had pluses and minuses to it like you know like uh and i think for all of it like people have gone like oh uh the juice isn't as worth the squeeze for a, <laughs> for the industry so now i feel like it's come more back to the fans a little bit so mm -hmm. and i think that's that's a good thing that's mm -hmm. my hot take what do i know <laughs> yeah no um mariah so for me you know i've been to south by southwest i've been to um atx i used to go to atx mm -hmm. all the time but i haven't really been to a, a, like a comic con mm. um now that being said I, i'm the guy who hasn't been but you know right after comic con like i'm reading all the articles right mm -hmm. i'm looking at all mm -hmm. the pictures and going oh this is amazing and oh i can't believe that this was said um, but I haven't been, um, so I'm a, a big fan from afar. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, long time listener, uh, first time caller, first time caller, <laughs> yeah. first time, first time for San Diego for you. Then this is gonna be awesome. Oh, I'm I'm so excited. It's yeah. gonna be really cool. Um, what? Uh, so you attend a lot of them. Um, I feel a like lot. you've probably been to at least uh, all the ones I could probably even think of. Are yeah. there any in particular that you think are like unsung heroes of cons that you're like, this is one that like, if more people like it would, it's a hidden gem, if you will. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, wow, that's yeah, that's a good question. I mean, every con is is offers its own unique thing. I mean, I probably honestly, the the and this is not. I'm not pandering to the listeners, but, but the, the one that I've been so excited for and really so impressed by is, um, uh, Star Trek Las Vegas. Mm. And, Ooh. uh, I started going, uh, uh, the first one was 
um, right after the pandemic. So, or at least right at the tail end of it. So it was like 2021. Um, so I've been, a, this will be a third year to go. And, um, you know, for the, the size of the con, it's a pretty small convention and it's only the size of this, of this hotel ballroom, this certain mm-hmm. hotel ballroom. And, uh, so, you know, vendor wise, there's maybe, I don't know, maybe 50 vendors. It's not that many. Um, but the fan to celebrity ratio, as far as the, you know, the talent is concerned is, is, um, really amazing. It really is truly amazing. Like the access that you have to, um, the cast of all these different shows and the, um, and you know, it's a five day show. So it's just like, you just talking Trek like 24 seven for five days straight. <laughs> and, um, uh, it, it really is like, it's really why it, like, it feels like it could be like 10 times larger, but mm. the fact that it's, it's intimate and, um, you truly can just, um, there may be lines for certain, um, celebrities, but you, you know, it's not that long, not, not, you know, I go to all the big ones like San Diego and New York and WonderCon and all, you know, all these ones that you have to like wait in line for just like hours and hours. And these are like so modest, these, the lines and, and, um, of course the panels are awesome, but to me, it's like, um, it's very low key because everyone's there for five days. So no one's rushing to get anywhere. Cause you can, you know, you're going to be there for five days. And so, so um, again, this, just the, just the access to the, the talent is really remarkable. And so if you are, you know, a big fan of Star Trek, um, it really is like, I, I think it's best bang for your buck because mm-hmm. it's not that, it's not that crowded and the lines aren't, aren't that long. And um, you'll meet more of the cast than you'll ever thought possible. Yeah, I uh, that's good to know because yeah, I yeah. that's one of the reasons why I like um, not to keep plugging them, but the ATX Television Festival and like Clyde knows it's like they keep it small. Like I've never, I think this was the first year I didn't get into one panel I wanted to go to, and it was because it was a micro panel and they only had like forty seats available, so it was yeah. like yeah. this very niche like uh, time. But yeah, like I saw everything I wanted to see. I like was literally bumping shoulders with like Ted Danson because there was a Cheers reunion. It was mm-hmm. wild. Um, who, by the way, walks around the press room and introduces himself as like, hi, like I'm Ted Danson. And everyone has to be like, we know. <laughs> um, <laughs> but uh, very charming. But that's cool. Yeah, yeah. I haven't done. Paul, you've done Las Vegas before, right? So I was Vegas? there. Or were you just there at the same time? <laughs> I was there for my friend's 50th birthday party last year. Oh, it was man. at the Valley's. Yeah, and, and we're, we're at the Bally's. Yeah, yeah we're, we're we're playing roulette, and then there was this woman, and she had she was walking down the the casino floor in this badass pike jacket, like you know this gold pike jacket, and I go, oh right, it's here, and so I want to get a jacket like that, and I tried to get a day pass, and they sold out. Mm. And I was pissed. I was uh. pissed. But but I, but now I'm in I'm in search for like a pike jacket, like you know there you like. Go. Like a pike jacket I could wear every day. Kind there of you thing. go. I think, Tony, well, I think Tony has the website for you. <laughs> call me. It, uh, to, to, to plug another one is uh, a shameless plug is uh, I am the uh, main stage moderator for Awesome Con in DC in two weekends. So not this weekend, awesome. but next. And I'm really excited because we get um, I'll get a chance to interview um, like uh, Karen Gillian from oh, wow. Guardians mm-hmm. and the. Um, the, the, yeah the cast from lord of the rings but i'm super excited about is um i'll be on stage with lavar burton so <gasps> i'll get a chance to uh, yeah so i'm Clyde. just Clyde has died I'm, I'm, burton I'm, forever <laughs> <laughs> but i'm super like you know just like flipping out because um yeah that's gonna be so awesome so i'm excited really excited about that so, so you, if you're in the dc area um june 16th through the 18th um I'll be at awesome con, but yeah. Awesome. So cool. That's awesome. Know, For awesome, awesome con. Um, <laughs> are you allowed to share anything about San Diego comic con yet? Uh, well, um, it's okay. If you're not, we can yeah, say, check yeah, the yeah. socials. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Um, you know, like if you follow here within, you know, that we always come out with new, uh, exclusives for, um, for the show. Uh, we'll, so we'll definitely have, uh, a new selection of uh, some jackets. We'll also have some um, uh, some uh, bags, like sling bags. Uh, we'll have some of those. We'll have a new some new exclusive pins. 
Um, the uh, the big thing right now has been uh, our Star Trek Picard the um, the field jackets, oh. and so so we started uh, pre ordering during um, the season three, and they really blew up. Like it was, we were completely overwhelmed with the orders that we got for the um, for the field jacket. And um, the orders are now just now getting here. So we're actually shipping everything out right now. Uh, but the but we'll have field jackets um, on hand um, to sell at the show. Uh-huh. And so that will be a big, a big thing. Like people will definitely be that and the Strange New Worlds, um, the, the Way Mission jacket, the, the gray leather jacket. So both those jackets will be in super high demand at the, at the show. And so. Um, so while that isn't necessarily an exclusive, it'll feel like an exclusive because the fans will be that those two jackets will um, will sell out um, quick at, at the show. So um, so that's a big thing. And then um, we do have a, a pretty major um, announcement. It's too early to to share details on it, but in the past we've done like um, offsite events, uh, after parties and pre parties and all that sort of stuff. And so all that to say is that we do have a big, um, offsite, um, experience planned. And so just can't tell you can't give details yet because all the, they're all just sort of come together, but those that are listening can kind of plan and expect the big announcement to come out pretty soon about that. Very cool. So excited. Yeah. Um, we just have a few minutes left. So I thought I would just ask because next week is Strange New Worlds premiere for the second season. Is there anything you're looking forward to in particular or something you hope that happens this season? Well, I mean, I, I don't know how close they'll stick to canon, but like I am I am so shipping chapel and spock <laughs> like i just want that to, i want that to happen so badly i don't think it ever will i think they'll keep teasing us all the way into uh the kirk era but um but you know i just i love that story i think that triangle that they have going on mm-hmm. um uh with the pal the prong the uh, who i can't remember it's pring the fiance to pring to pring <laughs> what's the name one of the team you know, uh, yeah uh, uh, um uh, anyway, uh, but that that little love triangle, I'm just I'm completely obsessed with that. So I, I can't wait to see what goes on there. So yeah, I'm uh, really I, I mean to no surprise, I'm really excited about the the crossover episode with uh, with Lower Decks. Oh yeah, which I think is going to be episodes. So they released all the titles um, for the season, which I thought was interesting. Um, there's a couple that I'm like that have sparked my interest a little bit uh, more than others. So there's like Among the Lotus Eaters, which I which also has Davy Perez as one of the co-writers, and he did a lot of the more like thriller, uh, horror episodes. So I was like, this could get really fun. Maybe some fun mm-hmm. Odyssey vibes. Maybe we get <laughs> some interesting. I, I was like, something is in black and white on the poster. So I was like, maybe this has something to do with that. And then um, the Gorn, the Gorn old- could be back. Oh, I'm so excited for the Gorn to come back. Um, And then these old scientists, um, I think it's the seventh episode. I think that's going to be our crossover is my prediction. Uh, What what was the name again? What was the name of that one? Uh, Those old scientists. Interesting. Uh, Well, what makes you think that that's the crossover episode? Uh, Because I think that is a Mariner line talking about like the original, um, like talking about Kirk and Spock. Ah, hmm. pretty sure that's a lower deck nice. joke. Okay. Is those old scientists? Yeah. Uh, I don't know. I, I, I think for me, there are three things I'm, I'm, I can't wait to know more about. Right. So when we left last season, Una was being arrested, mm-hmm. and I was like, mm. I, "That's got to be resolved for me." So I'm, I'm really into mm. that. Um, I am also incredibly interested in to see who becomes the next chief engineer. Mm-hmm. Like I, mm-hmm. I, I feel like I need to know because I'm always fascinated by chief engineers. And then kind of the third piece is I, I need to deal with, you know, as we say on the pod, not my Kirk. I got to. Oh, <laughs> that's right. Not my Kirk. I, I need to, I need to mm. experience this and maybe we'll move from not my Kirk to maybe my Kirk by the end of the season. Uh, so the, okay. those are the kind of three things that I'm keeping a close eye on in anticipation of the season opener next week. Like for me, like, you know, not that anyone asked, 
<laughs> I asked everybody to fall. <laughs> uh, like the thing that I want to see that I didn't get serviced in uh uh in season one uh is Sam Kirk. Because like, you know, uh in TOS he dies. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, he he dies in the episode where Spock, you know, goes blind for a little bit because of the space parasites. Mm-hmm. Uh so like the fact that they brought him in, like like I'd like to see his character fleshed out in some way, like, you know, mm-hmm. uh, such that, like, it, that episode means more to me mm. because, like, you know, uh, that episode means really nothing to me. Oh, it's your brother. Oh, oh, well. Oh, oh Scott just got, Spock just got bit. You know, that, mm. that, 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 that's that been, you know, uh, that that's that episode. But, like, mm. but I, I feel like he's been, like, you only see Sam in the beginning the second episode and the last episode of season uh, mm. uh, uh, right he's there mm. he's there going at the very end of the pilot he's there yeah. when they're trying to destroy the asteroid and he kind of mm-hmm. goofs and then he's at the very end in like you know in the season finale where tell me about your brother mm. <laughs> <laughs> so like I, I hope that they i hope they use sam as opposed to just let him fade, fade out mm-hmm. yeah yeah i'd like to see that too um, Tony, is there anything else that you haven't talked about that you'd like to promote or plug that's coming up? Um, I, <laughs> I, I'm somehow I'm exhibiting at a Pokemon convention next weekend in Orange County. So, um, that's kind of interesting. Uh, as a side kind of gig and hustle with my kids, we buy, sell and trade Pokemon cards. And so, <laughs> you know, if you're into that and you're in Anaheim, then come to the card party. Um, and, you know, I already mentioned this already, but in a couple weekends, uh, Awesome Con in, in D.C., so that would be great, too. Um, we'll be, our next stop for Here Within will be uh, San Diego Comic Con, of course, in July. And then that's followed by um, a cut, just like, geez, 10 days later or whatever, it's going to be uh, Star Trek Las Vegas. So that's going to be here before we know it. And then Dragon Con in September, uh, New York Comic Con in uh, October. And so um, you can catch us. At any Those of those flyer shows. miles really add yeah, up. <laughs> right. they are, yeah, they do. Transporter but, uh, fees. <laughs> Transporter fees. I know. Like, I cannot wait till we make transporters a thing because it will sure make it a lot easier on, on all of us that travel so much but but yeah so you know we'll be all those uh, cities and it's going to be you know really great we i love this this time of year between july and august because um it's like high you know a lot of traffic a lot of travel and a lot of interaction with fans and and yeah, I can't, I can't wait. So great. Um, thank you again for joining us. This was such yeah. a fun delight. I love hearing everyone's journey with Star Trek and um, getting to finally meet. I was like, I always joke. I was like, I have so many friends on the internet that like we all like love and enjoy a lot of the <laughs> same things and we interact in those spaces. So it's always nice to put um, faces and voices to the tweets <laughs> that we see on the internet. Um, thank you to everyone who joined us live. We appreciate your questions. Um, the audio episode will be up this weekend. Um, and we will be back next week for the premiere of Strange New World. Very exciting. We are going to start a half an hour later because I had I have to work late. <laughs> and, um, sometimes life happens, but we will be live streaming. We will be, we will be live. We will have the episode up. I'm so excited to dig into this season. Um, you can find us at star trek pod.co for all of our links. Um, and I think that's it. Live long and prosper, everybody. Yeah. Bye. At star trek pod. Yeah. At star trek pod. Thanks, Chippy. Thanks, Thanks Karen. Bye. Thanks, Bye. Bye. Bye.